Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Schwab. Uh, a little bit earlier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought for sure that uh, that last week um, that I'd heard that th this week they weren't doing one, but they were. So we watched one. Yeah. Hashtag Charm's done it again. Well, thanks for watching, Charm Anderson. <laughs> Wow, this is a really short podcast. We got thirty seconds. Uh, Peter, take a week off. <laughs> well, that brings me to uh, I think might be a recurring thing now. Uh, corrections. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, no break. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> also, the whole thing with uh, Maggie's magic stick. We we were giving her credit for bringing it back, but it wasn't. I forgot this was a new stick that she had that like Jordan gave her. Yeah, it's just her extendo baton thing. Yeah, didn't Jordan give it to her for, like, self-defense or something? Yeah, that's when they were doing that Maggie can beat random people up on the streets thing, I guess. Yeah, uh, so sorry about that. Gave them too much credit. <laughs> I did want to bring up briefly, too, uh, it, during the conversation about uh, Josefina last week, um, because the show used this terminology, uh, we started talking about her as uh, biolog or not being biologically female, um, and uh, I didn't know that that was uh, apparently an offensive terminology, that that's uh, something that TERFs use a lot. So we're going to try and remember to not use that terminology anymore and refer to non-trans women as mm. cisgender women. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, this week we watched Season 3, Episode 10, Bruja Ha. Oh, oh no. <laughs> As women, we feel the need to handle everything ourselves. But the most powerful thing we can do is ask for help. So, um, at the end of last episode, they opened the Tomb of Chaos by reading uh, the tablet or something. I'm kind of confused about everything. Or, have you found that you're a little confused about what's going on? Yeah, a little. Because, like, the rift was open, a bunch of monsters were coming out, and then they were like, oh no, We once we went there, then a bunch of us followed out, so they're, like, extra open, so I guess there's more rifts now, and then they opened the Tomb of Chaos for some reason, and now more monsters are coming out, and this is, like, it's like levels of how many monsters are coming through rifts. I feel like this was an issue all season. It was, yeah. It just became larger scale, I guess, once they did that. Were they planning on doing this with the cliffhanger with Jordan, and then they're like, shit, we have to do something else now? I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know what the hell that was. Why did they read the tablet, n knowing that there was something like about this tablet involving this rift with this Alcatraz with all the monsters that, like, why do they keep reading spells they don't know what they do, and then, like, bad things happen? <sighs> I don't know. They, they just keep doing this and show, like, I'm, I'm not sure... I'll just roll the dice, gamble. We'll see what happens here. Like, that happens in this episode, too, where it's, like, completely ridiculous decision. <laughs> just like, well, I'll see how this goes. <laughs> this could go really bad, but it will. <laughs> why, do they, why do they say this stuff out loud if they're trying to translate something? And they're like, this might relate to our allergy and it could help us out. Why don't they just write it down and they'll be like, this is what this means. If we say this, that'll open up the two chaos. Maybe let's not do that. They're just the charmed ones. They don't know how spells work. <laughs> so this just seems so dumb to me. It, okay, it so, is. <laughs> um, <laughs> we open six days after Oops All Scorpions. Yeah. Uh, there's a blood moon. Um, none of this relates to anything. We don't see any scorpions. The blood moon is never mentioned. It's just those are things that happened, I guess. What do the scorpions have to do with the monsters being let out of the rift? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> What does this relate to anything? <laughs> yeah, I thought we would see something to do with the scorpions. It was just like, oh no, a minor irritation. We had to get rid of a few scorpions and then some other monsters showed up. Like, come on, show. <laughs> like, if you're going to have like a setup for your next episode at the end, like, do something. <laughs> like, yeah, use I, I... it <laughs> slightly. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, scorpions. No, oh, well. <laughs> that had nothing to do with anything. This is hilarious to me that this is this is six days after this happened, and they're acting like it's fucking Voyager, the the year of hell or whatever. They're like, oh, I'm so tired of fighting. Ah. Oh. 
Well, it's just the two-parter of hell in Voyager. <laughs> yeah, the two-parter of hell. But at least some time was supposed to have passed. Yeah, and it's here true. it's like six days later, they're like, I'm tired of fighting. <laughs> We've been fighting monsters for six days. Not even a full week yeah, has not happened. Not even a full week. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. So um, the first thing that we see um, after the, the opening text is uh, Macy is running through the street. She's got like her battle outfit on. She's got the fingerless gloves. She's got like one of those like bullet uh, uh, belts around her, but it's got like potions or something on it. Yeah. Like Rambo. <laughs> I'll give them a little credit here. I thought the opening was a little promising. It's not a lot of the episode, but it's like, oh, it's nice to see one of them out in the field doing something. <laughs> I actually, I liked the monsters in this one. Yeah. I thought they had cool designs. Yeah. There's another one later where they take them out too easily again, which is constantly a problem with this show. It's like, make yeah. something scary actually scary, how about? Like, it can <laughs> do something. It's not easily just like, I have to hold my hand up like, oh, this one's extra tough. This will take five seconds of holding my hand up at them before they <laughs> die. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> yeah. I did like the design, though, so I thought that was kind of good. I just don't think, I don't think they had a lot of time with any of them, really. Like, they're, they're, the other two, the one that was taken out super easy, like, whatever. But the other two, like, are kind of around, but the fights aren't really much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll get to them when we get they're to them. But, um. Yeah, I mean, I like the worm monster, which is the thing Macy's fighting at the beginning. Yeah, she's, I also liked her hair. She had, like, these, like, three little buns on top. I don't know what you call that particular style but it was pretty yeah. cool she also had potions in her buns to throw oh my god that'd be great <laughs> if she did she's hiding the potions in her buns <laughs> very good macy's had some great hair this season um so she's uh she's being chased by this giant cgi worm um she's holding like a glowing knife because she's casting spells on the knife to attack things in full yeah. like apocalypse mode she's like enchanting it to make it stronger i guess which is yeah. that works <laughs> yeah see i thought this was like when they unleashed all the scorpions and she's coming out like it's fucking mad max or something it was like oh the world's taken over by monsters like, there's monsters everywhere and, like, no yeah. one's safe, you know? But it it wasn't. Like, she <laughs> she sees this guy on a cell phone come out. He does not notice a giant worm is behind him. Yeah, like, it is right behind him. You would smell <laughs> it. You would feel it. Like, <laughs> it looks smelly. <laughs> yeah. It, it's insane this guy could stand there on his phone and not notice this thing hovering over him, probably drooling on top of him. <laughs> like, I'm about to eat you. Aww. Yeah, like, I mean, you you get that feeling when, like, someone or something's, like, directly behind you, too. Yeah. It's like, Ugh, like, you know. Uh, but he doesn't. He's too busy on his cell phone. That's, there's a message here. Like, he's he's too busy on his phone and not living in the real world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, LOL, yeah, I hear there's a bunch of monsters around lately. <laughs> None of that for me. I'm safe hanging out in this alley in the middle of the night. <laughs> we do it's only him and some people that I, I don't know if they were supposed to be dead or knocked out in safe space. Otherwise, we don't see people in the world interacting with monsters. Yeah, it, it's so ridiculous. Even though monsters are, like, everywhere right now? Yeah. Like, they're barely able to keep up with these things, supposedly. So, yeah, people should be getting killed or injured or something by these things. This should be well known. You can't pretend that the three of them are keeping this worldwide calamity contained. <laughs> How many rifts could there possibly be if they're able to just, like, trade off you go after a monster now i'm going after a monster now yeah. i'm going after a monster like how many a day could you possibly be doing in the entire world anyway yeah and i feel like the end of the last episode set up like you know this is not a thing you can deal with in shifts easily like it's like oh crap here's something big like you have no time and then just yeah they they got time no. They, they can deal with this slowly. <laughs> Maggie had time to go take a test, and neither of the other two noticed, Ugh. so they had Maggie, time. <laughs> she drives me insane. <laughs> so uh, Macy uh, vanquishes this uh, worm, and when the guy on the cell phone turns around, he doesn't notice any of this happened, and he goes, yeah, I wouldn't kill you to smile, winks at her, and walks away. <laughs> 
this show. <laughs> <laughs> they jam these dumb things in. It's so clunky all the time. It's like, why? Why? Like, especially just this idiot standing in the middle of a back alley sees this woman, like, who just threw a knife. And he's like, you smile more. <laughs> Dressed like fucking Rambo. Like, yeah, smile more, babe. Wink. <laughs> just to see another knife go right into his forehead. <laughs> so funny. So uh, Macy portals back to the bunker. Uh, Harry's there, um, and basically they explain what's going on. Monsters are loose everywhere. Um, they're go- they're going in shifts. Um, mm-hmm. Each of the sisters, whenever they see Andorra's magic map that somewhere in the world a monster's loose, they're like, "It's your turn. You go do it." Um, so Macy goes over to Maggie. She's uh, got like a little cot set up, and uh, she's like, "Hey, it's your turn." There's this monster in Germany. <laughs> and guess what? Maggie, star of the episode, is complaining. <laughs> she's got assignments she's like oh this is tough but also like i'm still trying to get that internship at the school <laughs> and it's tough to do school and hunt monsters you know supposedly this is like an apocalypse level event i know, like, I know. maggie's like i'm trying to still sneak in school work <laughs> if this is an apocalypse level event why are they even still having the test at the school like they're like hey dudes look we know there's monsters all around campus and all around town or whatever but look we still life goes on (laughs) you know you can't shut down the schools the university is staying open this week we know there's monsters (laughs) classes are still continuing as usual if a monster is in your seat when you get to your class ask them to leave (laughs) Look, if we know that there's a pandemic of monsters happening, <laughs> but who is going to babysit our kids? <laughs> We've told the monsters to follow the safety measures to stay within six feet away from the children. <laughs> I think we're good to go. Yeah, it's solved. <laughs> We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas. So Maggie's not doing too well. She's uh, she's hit a wall, as Macy says. She goes to Harry, and she's like, yeah, Maggie's not doing great. And then that's when Maggie comes strolling in all happy, and she goes, Guten Tag, bitches! <laughs> and then immediately you know what the story is. Like, I said it as soon as she did that. Yeah. I was like, oh, so she's, like, doping herself with magic, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, she's magicking herself. Did they show her doing that before, or you just guessed and you were right? No, oh, I just guessed because she immediately came out and she was fine. It's like, okay, they're doing a Maggie's doping herself with magic to cope <laughs> story here. <laughs> yeah, kind of a, a light addiction story here. Yeah, very light. <laughs> <laughs> very light. Uh, Mel's at safe space, uh, listening, like, I guess upstairs. I guess they're all at safe space, but she's hanging out in that cafe area. And she's uh, listening to the news, being depressed. They're talking about attacks everywhere, so there's some awareness from the world that this is going on. Mm-hmm. Josefina shows up, and she's got this rope that she's enchanted with Brujaria. And she's like, this will neutralize the magic of whatever it's wrapped around. Uh, I want to help out with this. Uh, so uh, let's go out in the field and let's start killing some monsters. And Mel's like, yeah, this is kind of dangerous. Let's not, <laughs> let's not do this. <laughs> Uh, this whole time, Josefina's like, come on, let me help. Gee willikers, guys. I can be part of the team. And they're like, no. <laughs> She's a regular Billy, I guess. <laughs> Except, yeah. No, see, if it was Billy, they'd be like, you get out here so we don't have to go. <laughs> yeah. Josefina, you go. You go yeah, kill the monsters. Kind of, yeah, the opposite of Billy. <laughs> Billy, you do everything. We'll stay home. I got a Manny Petty to get you. <laughs> Though, I mean, if Josefina's asking Maggie, I'm sure Maggie be like, yeah, you do it. Yeah, I gotta do my assignments. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at the, the bunker, uh, Macy was hurt uh, in the fight with that worm at some point. Um, it, her shoulders hurt, so Harry tries to heal her from a distance, like, maybe if I just sort of stand over here, maybe I can kind of get yeah. it. <laughs> I'll aim my heel beam. <laughs> <laughs> His Care Bear stare. Yeah. Like, I'll bounce it off this mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was able to, like, telekinetically, like, help him one time when he was unconscious, right? Like, put a potion in his mouth or something. Yeah. And so I feel like from a distance, this could probably, it should have yeah. worked. But you know, from a distance. From a distance. It looks good from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, uh, but this ends up hurting her, and she's kind of she's pissed off about the situation mm-hmm. uh, as she is wont to do lately. Yeah. Um, she's not having a a, um, a good time trying to cope with this. Um, she's like, I haven't been at my job for a week. So <laughs> <laughs> safe spaces and she she's d- downstairs from her job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> her job is like right up there. Uh, they're sleeping in shifts. They're fighting monsters. She's like, I'm gonna go home and get that first aid kit that we didn't have here for some reason. I don't know why we didn't have a first aid kit. <laughs> Here, but I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> I could go upstairs and ask Jordan, but we don't. But he's how so he touchy gets. about that. <laughs> Jordan, can I borrow this first aid kit? What? After what we just went through last time, <laughs> you're gonna come up here and ask me for a first aid kit. He's sitting on a pile of first aid kits, like Smaug, <laughs> like. Oh. Yeah, he's probably there hoarding them first. during this he's, apocalypse. That's why they only got one at the house because he's stealing all the first aid kits like a gremlin. <laughs> Weirdo first. Stay kit boy. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, Maggie's in the German woods hunting a monster. Everything's always in the woods. No matter where in the world they go, it's yeah. the woods. <laughs> the, though Fenric the Vile, he was, uh, someone in the comments said they were in China, actually. So he was in China somewhere. Mm. It looked a little different because it was an interior. So they didn't have to show yeah. anything of the world. <laughs> Where in the woods is the next monster? <laughs> wow, everywhere in the world looks like the the Vancouver woods. <laughs> it's funny that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, she's uh, hunting the monster, and uh, then we go back to Harry and Mel in the bunker. Um, they see another monster on Dora's magic map in Chile, so Mel portals out to go do that. Uh, meanwhile, we see Macy's jacket that she left behind. It drips this ominous green worm goo that turns into a little worm yeah. on the floor like, oh how cute <laughs> this is great <laughs> squish yeah. like the little worm roars too <laughs> it'd be That's great if it just fun. stayed little and it was their pet like they yeah. just had a little pet worm <laughs> it's so cute take me seriously <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> who's a little death worm who's a little death worm <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely what the show should have done yeah Deathworm did nothing wrong <laughs> okay so maggie's in the german woods um she finds this footprint uh and she touches it and sees a little girl in trouble and she starts to panic at this vision um and she magics herself so that she's feeling fine <laughs> they call me mellow maggie <laughs> Just sees on the typewriter, feeling fine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guess they're not worried about Maggie having panic attacks anymore. I mean, it's just part of her. It doesn't go away, you know, it's just... Yeah, but they're sending her off on it. missions by herself like this. You think if that was a concern? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mel's in Chile. She finds this monster looking through a dumpster. It's like this gnarly looking dude with a skull face. I like the design, um, but it's just two seconds and then she, she blows him up yeah. <laughs> with her hands. <laughs> Does a, a piper. <laughs> yeah, ridiculously easy. I mean, I feel like, I mean, it wasn't a bad design, but I do feel like it is a kind of design of seeing similar takes of yeah. and other things quite a bit. But it, it was a decent looking creature. I just wish it was threatening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like anything. Well, r- the monster is really sort of just a reason for her to be there when this happens. So um, two lights appear in the sky and a couple of weirdos in cloaks show up. <laughs> it's a, a guy and a girl and they start doing this like shriek singing at yeah. her. They do harmonic attack, which was giving me Carnage and C minor from Transformers <laughs> season three vibes. <laughs> like, oh, what? great. One of the best episodes of Transformers meets Charmed. <laughs> It wasn't that bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> no, I mean, this wasn't as bad as Carnage and C Minor. That one was bad. <laughs> that was one of their worst. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, so she's like, and Mel's like, uh, fuck this, see ya, out. <laughs> Portal's out. Uh, she arrives at the bunker, but the portal stays open, and the weirdos follow her in. So she casts a spell to kind of contain them in a force field. Uh, Harry walks over to go like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, does this bug you? (laughs) 
Uh, but one of them reaches through the force field and touches his head and knocks him out. Every time with Harry, everyone's got to get in his head. They got to like st- touch his head or yeah. invade his mind or suck his brains out or an amulet or whatever that thing that got in his mind with the eye. Yeah, I was worried he's going to have amnesia or something. It's just like- <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. didn't they-, they already did amnesia with him, didn't they? I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why the hell did you do that? Yeah, so he gets knocked out. Uh, Mel ties them up with Josefina's magic rope. Uh, Once again, there's just cutting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, So we're back with Maggie in the German woods. Uh, She ends up at this creepy abandoned playground. Kind of looks like Chernobyl or something. Yeah. See those pictures with like little rotten duck toys and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so she finds this creepy hooded woman in the mud. She's got like hair over her face and she takes out her uh, self-defense stick. And then the woman takes out a stick too. And then they do the skinny marred charge. Yeah. <laughs> like, when she pulls out a mirror weapon, Maggie's like, eh, real original. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I guess she's still too high to care. <laughs> She's uh, all she's got to do is get that weed stone from Fenric the Vile, and then everything will be fine. Yeah, she's just logic about it. No emotion. logic. A lot of magic drugs lately in <laughs> <laughs> uh, At the house, uh, Macy's patching up her wound, uh, and she passes out from the pain just as the phone's ringing. And it's Mel at the bunker. Back to the bunker. Uh, Harry is also unconscious. Everyone's just unconscious. <laughs> uh, and she can't touch him to wake him up. So she's like, uh, I'm going to... Can't touch this. Oh, they already had the episode called You Can't Touch This Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they already made the joke. Yeah. So we can never do a can't touch this joke again. <laughs> so never. Never. <laughs> um... What was Mel doing? She gets this like dropper and a potion, and she's like, "This is gonna hurt." What What was she gonna drop on him that would have? I don't. Was it gonna know. blow up or what was gonna happen? I, I don't know what that was supposed to be. <laughs> it's just a bunch of like hot chili sauce to <laughs> put in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, um, but she doesn't get a chance to use it um, because he immediately wakes up and grabs her arm. And there's no allergy shock. Yeah. Harry's powers are gone and he's mortal. Yeah. Well, for a second, they're like, oh, the, uh, the disease is gone or whatever. He's like, and so are my powers. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How does he know his powers are gone? Do you, does he feel different? Maybe. He might have tried to orb immediately to get away. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> I need to change my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just hate when you mean to orb and then you shit your pants? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that this would be a more permanent thing. Harry being mortal. I thought they were just like, we need to like, write this out for a bit. But no. Yeah, I kind of thought it might be a little bit of a thing too. But no, it's done in this episode. <laughs> Is it's just temporary so that him and Macy can like make out for a bit? Is that it? Like <laughs> I guess, yeah. She can be like, I really need this. He's like, L O L me too. Your sisters might be dying right now. She's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thought we'd take some time to just chill. It's a real Maggie move of <laughs> them. Yeah. This is the year of uh Macy and Harry. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, Maggie's fighting that monster in the woods, and uh, she looks up, and it's like Maggie in the ring. Like she's got the hair over her face. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maggie tries to portal out. Uh, <laughs> the Maggie from the ring's like seven days, and she's like, "No, I can't take seven days. Just six days. Six days was too much for me. It's too much for me." And then, like, I've been doing wow, really? stuff for six days. Can't do it. Nope. Oh, wow, really? That's pathetic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This is good, though. It's good for COVID because they don't have to get another actor in there except for, like, the stunt double who's going to be around anyway. So, (laughs) win-win. So, yeah, um, Maggie freaks out and starts... uh, She tries to portal out, but she's lost her marble! (laughs) That's ironic, right? The psych student lost her marble! I gotta give credit to you. You're the one who said she lost her marbles when we were watching it. I just wrote it down. <laughs> I don't want to steal your jokes, fail. <laughs> All right, so she's like, well, that didn't work. Bye, and just runs away. <laughs> 
So at the bunker, Josefina's there now, uh, and she's like, well, if these uh, weirdos can take Harry's powers, uh, they can give me powers. And uh, Mel's like, well, you're not ready to fight monsters and stuff. And Josefina's like, well, no, you. (laughs) (laughs) Also, you're you're all pregnant. You can't fight. (laughs) I am a little confused about, like, witch powers, because I feel like other witches get by without special charmed one type powers. See, I think this is something that uh, this is something that was confusing in the original show, and it's confusing here too. So, what this is with Josefina, she can do, um, she can cast spells and uh, and do potions and stuff. Mm-hmm. So she can use some magic stuff despite not having powers. She just doesn't have like an auto put my hand up and it does something power. Yeah, well, because like I don't think I think she's officially. She's trying to prove that she's a witch. I think that's the difference between being a bitch and ju- or being a bitch. Being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I didn't mean to say that. Between being I don't think she's a bitch. <laughs> okay, this is the difference between being a bitch and a witch, okay? So if you're a basic bitch, right? You can cast spells and 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 do the potions, but you don't have your powers unlocked, your witchy powers. But then the charmed ones have special charmed one powers on top of that, but it doesn't really seem that much different than other witches. So I don't really know what level Levels of powers or who or what? <laughs> yeah, like what was Mel's girlfriend's <laughs> name again? Uh, Ruby. Ruby. Like, d- does she have any extra powers besides you know just casting spells and her potions? I mean, she. They do say she's a witch, so I guess she has witch powers. But it seems like witches just cast spells. So what's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea, especially because Josefina had that super magic, a super helpful magic rope thing that yeah. held those weirdos who were actually like super powerful. So the fact she was able to do that, like, what makes yeah. the charmed one so special? That was better than anything the charmed ones were doing. <laughs> charmed ones just whine about stuff. <laughs> 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 so they're like, all right. Mel's going to go find Maggie. Harry's going to go find Macy. They're assigned sister. <laughs> Josefina is going to watch the weirdos. They're like, don't touch anything. Don't break anything. Don't fuck anything up, Josefina. <laughs> you just stand there and look at them. If anything happens, you call me. Yeah. Don't be a bitch. Okay. <laughs> don't be a basic bitch. <laughs> so uh, Harry uh, finds Macy unconscious in the house. Uh, he tries to heal her before he remembers he can't. I thought that was kind of a good, a good touch. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he's like, well, there's some healing potions in the house. See, he can do he can use potions because he's a basic bitch now. Yeah, he doesn't have the powers. <laughs> so uh, Mel's in the German woods looking for Maggie. She finds her stick and uh, calls her on her phone <laughs> and Maggie answers it. She's just hiding from creepy Maggie <laughs> mm-hmm. behind a rock. And she's like, I can't come out or creepy Maggie will hear me. But like, she won't hear her on the phone like she's talking normal. Yeah. This doesn't make much sense either, like, why Maggie's sitting around like, I'm so scared, when she just dopes herself up again shortly after, and she's like, I don't care. It's like, why'd you let yourself get like this anyway? Like, all she has to do is touch herself, and then... (laughs) I don't know. Because, you know, you you build up a tolerance to it. You gotta use more and more magic as you build up a tolerance to the doping yourself up magic, you know? It doesn't last. Well, I mean, if this had been, like, a multi-episode arc, maybe that would have been a thing. But it's done in this one episode. (laughs) Did you ever think about not doing that? Oh. Oh, yeah. Right. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, we we don't see her, like, you know, getting to the point where there's ill effects from her overusing the spell or anything. It's just kind of like... Oh, in this episode, like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm using magic to give myself confidence. <gasps> yeah, they're basically just saying, like, it's just from a mental health perspective, not a good way to go about it, rather than, like, showing any other effects of it. They're just like, this could lead down a bad path. So it's sort of like a, a soft touching into this kind of thing. <laughs> we'll cut it off before it really even becomes a thing. Uh, yeah. Then again, they've only had to do this for less than a week. So. <laughs> <laughs> At the bunker, uh, Josefina is talking to those weirdos, and she's like, I'm a witch. I know I'm a witch. You can give me powers. Please help me out, and I can help them. Uh, my pr- me primas. And they're like, oh! <laughs> uh, She keeps saying me primas. What does my, my primas mean? It must be some sort of, like, it must mean, like, relative or something. I need to look this up. Not prima donna. <laughs> we know they're prima donnas. <laughs> I'm gonna find out what is pr- what is 
me primo me cousin okay they're co- oh cousin <laughs> of course because they're cousins <laughs> yes, that makes sense huh? <laughs> like there was some big meaning here and they're just saying cousin yeah. okay <laughs> Uh, she's like, uh, my primas, they're just trying to help people out. So you can help me, help them, help yourselves. <laughs> so they start like singing at her. And uh, at the house, Harry gives Macy a potion. She wakes up and she realizes they can make out now. So they make out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Maggie's head rolls onto the floor through a portal. I'm like, oops. Uh oh, <laughs> SpaghettiOs. Uh, Maggie's in the woods with creepy Maggie looming over her, uh, and she's- Creepy Maggie is looming over skinny Mark Maggie, is what I wrote. <laughs> um, but, uh, Mel takes out the creepy Maggie, and, uh, the, she reveals- she talks about what it is, she's like, it's a doppelganger, but it can't hold a form with two people there, it needs to be alone with someone to look like them and pick up on their fears or something. Okay. It's kind of an interesting idea, but again, like, it doesn't have a lot of time. This is a similar problem to last week in that, like, the individual monsters, I think, were kind of interesting. I, I don't know about the dumpster monster, because we don't really know, except it, like, dumpsters what it was, but <laughs> um, we just didn't have a lot of time to, like, go into the different monstery bits. Yeah, the doppelganger thing's a creepy idea that could have been an episode yeah. had you, you know, executed it well at all. There's- dump it into this as a thing for Maggie to be doing for a bit. They need to have more stuff focusing on individual characters for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. Not just like little bits. We had a lot of Jordan last week, but it was crammed in with a lot of other stuff. Yeah. (laughs) And I feel like it'd be better if we could just explore one particular person and just go into this. Like we could have had just Maggie dealing with these problems and this doppelganger. Yeah, it's okay to highlight a particular character for and well, most of the episode. Just have a story mostly about them. <laughs> yeah, just need to give some things time. Mm-hmm. Maggie picks up her uh, the magic stick, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she she magically makes it into a spear to kill the doppelganger. Like she's just like, oh, I need a pointy weapon now, so a spear. I don't know what happened to her magic staff. She had a magic staff. <laughs> yeah. Didn't she say, like, desperate times call for pointier weapons or something dumb? (laughs) Yeah, I think that's what she said. (laughs) I'm in need of a guilt remover spell. Cut back to Harry and Macy. They're holding each other on the floor. They have time for this long conversation. They know things are going on, but they're going to take some time for this. (laughs) Harry knows Mel went off to save Maggie. Like, shouldn't they be like, all right, let's rush over to safe space and see if they're dead? (laughs) (laughs) Like he also knows they have those weirdos, you know, wrapped up yeah. in a rope too, yeah. which is another thing you need yeah. to check on pretty quick. If they showed up and their like their cousin and their sisters were dead, they'd be like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, guess we Oops. should have spent that us time on the floor." <laughs> oh, beans. <laughs> um, it removed from the urgency of the situation. I do like the Harry and Macy scenes uh, this time around. I think like there's something more happening there than them just saying like, eh, it's a bummer we can't touch. <laughs> yeah. Let's be boring for a bit. It was nice to give them this moment, but yeah, it's just the timing's wrong. Yeah. There's a time and a place. Macy is saying that she's just like, she's just tired of fighting in general. Like, she had a week of fighting monsters. She's kind of tired of that. And she's mm-hmm. also tired of fighting in a world that won't fight for people like her, is her wording. And Harry's like, I won't stop fighting for you. Love is a battlefield. Whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Macy, you realize how ridiculous that man with his phone was earlier? I am done. <laughs> <laughs> She'll let that worm eat him. <laughs> Idiots like that and Professor Sexist. (laughs) Those on the nose idiots in the world. (laughs) I was just thinking about when when Harry was introduced in the pilot, how he was like teaching women's studies or something, and how Mel was so mad that this white man was teaching women's studies. (laughs) He was part of the problem. Anyway, uh, those two are having, like, a nice moment together at a really bad time. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, Josefina is humming at the weirdos, trying to communicate. They're kind of like, And she starts break dancing. It was a wild time. (laughs) They're hum fighting. (laughs) 
Uh, Josefina is like, well, I don't think you guys are trying to hurt anyone. I think there's something else going on here. Uh, I can let you guys go if if you help. And they start uh, doing their little hum singing, and uh, the tablet glows. <laughs> well, that must be a yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, that's good enough for me. Um, she sees the tablet glowing and she's like, this has something to do with you. She, I think she says that's you, but I don't know. Maybe she means metaphorically like that relates to them in some way. I just think she just means like that's you doing that. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Um, Josefina lets them go and they walked forward menacingly like, hey, wait a minute. Yes, <laughs> I thought sir. you going like, oh, meant like we were cool. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you lied <Great>. to me. <laughs> yeah. <Fatality>. dead. <laughs> I thought for a moment, this isn't the case, but I thought for a moment they might be the cleaners. Mm. Yeah, you know, the cleaners, like, would, like, show them just wipe people's minds. Like, oh, maybe, like, the monsters are, like, causing a bunch of shit and then, like, they're just wiping people's minds so civilians don't know about it or something. Yeah, I thought for a second it might be the avatars, too, because they kind of seem similarly dressed. Yeah, they do have the, the kind of unisex outfits going mm. on. Mm-hmm. Similar ty- type of thing. So uh, Maggie and Mel are also having like a talk time. They're like, everything's fine. Josefina's got this covered. <laughs> the person I said was not ready for fighting is going to be watching these people. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so Maggie admits that she's using magic to help herself feel more confident. Uh, she she even failed a test. <laughs> she took a test at school and she failed it. And Mel goes, you took a test during all this? <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, so no wonder you're run down, Maggie. It's like you're trying to deal with an apocalypse and on that you're like, I should make time to study for a test and go to school and take said test. <laughs> like, you, you can say, like, I don't know, we've got an emergency. I don't know if you guys knew this, but monsters are kind of an issue right now. I'm going to need this week off. <laughs> I would, uh, I, I would almost agree with Mel in the scene, except she goes like, why would you do this? We would have helped you pick up the slack <laughs> while you went to school. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> so you were saying, like, we would run ourselves ragged and, lay, like, you know, me and Macy could easily die because now we're extra overtired because you want to go and do a test at school? Priorities, you idiots! <laughs> You're what, 19, 20 years old? I think you can try this class again uh, yeah. next year when monsters aren't yeah. when there's not loose everywhere. When there's not apocalypse going on. From, from, uh, from Monster Alcatraz. Ugh. <laughs> um, but really, this whole conversation is, is about uh, mental health, basically. So Mel's like, y- you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help. And she says something about, like, you know, as, like, as women... Like, we don't have a lot of help or something. I don't know. She says some line that I felt like it didn't ex- extremely relate to the situation. She, she said it like, as women, we want to deal with it ourselves or something. Not oh, like yeah, weak. yeah. We're too independent as women or something yeah. like that. We always want to solve everything ourselves. And it was like, no, but this doesn't relate to this at all yeah it's like wh- what happened to women supporting women like <laughs> women always want to take charge and solve it ourselves like what <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about yeah this is just maggie cramming something in really inappropriately during an apocalypse <laughs> no that was mel i think that said that that like as women they want to no, solve it but themselves she, but she's relating it to what maggie was doing Oh, right. Yeah. That's like a Maggie thing. I don't think this is specifically a gendered thing at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gendered stuff in the show, but I don't think that particular moment. Both, both, like any gender can be uh, (laughs) selfish. (laughs) Maggie, she's like leaps and bounds beyond all. (laughs) Well, I think this is in the context what they're trying to say is basically just she doesn't want to, she just wants to get everything done without asking for help, without burdening other people about it i think that's what they're getting at there Mm -hmm. rather than uh, she's not supposed to be selfish (laughs) (laughs) no just there's a time and place for to be a bit selfish and this is ridiculous So, uh, uh, Macy and Harry have made their way back to safe space, holding hands like everything's hunky-dory, and then they find a bunch of people on the floor like, oh yeah, there was kind of a monster apocalypse happening. Mm-hmm. Oops. 
it's just, everyone can forget this the moment they're not looking at it, like eh, i got time for other things <laughs> I don't know if they were supposed to be dead or if they were just unconscious. Someone was twitching, but they could have been dying. I don't know. No, I mean, especially by the end of it, we find out, I guess they're all fine. Oh, did they say they were all fine? Yeah, because it's the, uh, the perfectos or whatever they're called. <laughs> the perfecte. Perfectamente. The, the perfecti. Perfect die, I think, Perfect is what they die. called them. Yeah. yeah. Mel and Maggie uh, go to the bunker, and they find the weirdos gone, and Josefina on the floor, unconscious. And uh, I'm glad that Maggie reapplied her lip gloss on the way there. <laughs> Maggie's got her priorities straight. <laughs> I noticed this, because when they were in the German woods, she had, like, minimal makeup, like, a TV version of minimal makeup. So, like, <laughs> done up, but, like, it wasn't very glamorous. Her lips were uh, a neutral shade. Um, and then when they get there, like, she has, like, lip gloss on. And she's, like, got her face kind of made up. So, mm -hmm. I guess on the way orbing there, she's like, hang on a minute. Yeah. Now I'm looking good. That was the sound of lip gloss being applied. <laughs> yeah. Before we go back, uh, I got to make a stop now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She had it in her purse, though. She was ready. Mm -hmm. She knew she'd have to reapply. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, Macy, and Mel uh, are upstairs. For some reason, they know that the two weirdos are still there. Like, they're looking for them. Like, I guess they know that that's why the people are unconscious. That Because the, like, two weirdos in the cloaks are running around upstairs somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Maggie's putting potions together downstairs uh, in the bunker, and Josefina uh, just wakes up and wanders over. So what, they just, like, left her on the floor? <laughs> They're like, wait, we gotta take care of this. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she's like, hey, if you kill those guys, like, the world's screwed. Don't kill them. So uh, they go and stop Harry, Macy, and Mel uh, from doing that, and uh, Josefina's like, they aren't there to, to hurt us. And that's when the weirdos float past, the, past them to open the Tomb of Chaos and uh, throws this big worm in, because there's a big worm nearby. That was the pet worm. It grew up. Yeah, yeah. The pet worm grew into a big worm uh, that we just then see, and they throw into the Tomb of Chaos. Mm-hmm. And now she, they, they can speak English. Yeah, because they, uh, I guess, absorb knowledge by knocking everyone out in safe space. Oh, was it not Josefina? I thought they touched Josefina and, like, learned from her. Well, they were still doing it to other people, so I assume it wasn't enough. Were they, or was that the worm that did it? No, you see them doing it. Oh, did they? I must have been looking at my notes. Okay, they just needed a big pool of knowledge. Apparently, yeah. Okay, now we know how to talk without hums. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like these guys. I thought they were kind of fun. Um, They're uh, Mo and Aladria. Mo and Aladria. <laughs> yeah. But she's like, I, oh, I'm all proper. He's like, oh, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they're like, hey, so, so we built the Tomb of Chaos. <laughs> And uh, they give uh, Harry his powers back, and they introduce themselves as the Perfecti. And we go to a commercial break. Arby's, we have the meat. Can come back, and they're eating fast food of <laughs> nondescript origin. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the story here is they lived in the world a long-ass time ago. But before they existed, uh, basically, uh, magic was kind of all out of order. So uh, all of the different types of magic people or whatever put all of their powers uh, together into two beings, the Perfecti, and um, they put all of the monsters in the world in the tomb with them to create order or something. Mm -hmm. am, am I getting this story right? S something like that. <laughs> <laughs> These long, rambly stories. <laughs> yeah, and they, they didn't get out till they read the tomb. Yeah, when they read that tablet, that yeah. set them free. And they're like, you guys should have done this forever ago, because now we got to clean up this whole big mess with these monsters getting out. So that's, that's what we're going to do. But like, there were already holes in it, right? So why didn't they get out already? This seems to be different, like not just part of the Tomb of Chaos. The Tomb of Chaos, seem, is that what they're calling the Alcatraz? Or is that a, a separate thing? I think that's what it is. I, I'm unclear on this, what exactly. <laughs> uh, all I know is that they were still trapped in there. They said they put themselves in there, too, to rest or something weird. Yeah, they were like, we're tired, yo. <laughs> we're gonna go to sleep. 
So now that they're free, they're going to capture all the monsters again. And uh, they're like, cool, this sounds great. We'd love to have your help capturing these monsters. And uh, Macy's like, about this allergy thing, uh, do you know what this is? Can you help us out? And they're like, yeah, it's kind of complicated, but sure, yeah, we'll fix it. Uh, but not yet, though. We got some other scenes, but we'll do th- we'll do that in a bit. <laughs> yeah. They're they're sort of fun, but I still get a bit of a sinister vibe from them. So yeah, they're too helpful, too powerful. It seems too good to be true here. Yeah, there's got to be something, some kind of twist with them. Um, I thought when they said like, "Yeah, sure, we'll help you," then off screen they took the the allergy away. It wasn't until like the later scene when they're like, "Yeah, when we get our allergy taken away, we'll be cool." That I was like, "Oh, it's not yet." Yeah. Because it was a little bit of a weird transition. (laughs) It's very unclear, especially because the show loves to have a bunch of things happen off screen in it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Especially important things that maybe you'd want to see. Like the start of this apocalypse. That would have been cool. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So we get Maggie typing out a paper doing her sex in the city thing again. Um, she call, uh, she makes a call for a therapist. So she's taking care of some of her mental health issues. I'm going to give a thumbs up. Yeah. Is this going to be a running thing or is this just like, we wrapped that up? I I think it's just supposed to be part of her character and in, in self care. I think, I, I don't think it's supposed to be like a big storyline thing. It's just mm-hmm. a through line for her character. Mm-hmm. And unless this comes up as something else, but I think it's just... it's just... We'll wait for Maggie to do another dumb thing and then wrap it up in another episode. <laughs> <laughs> Very easily. Yeah, so it ties into her PTSD and her, like, uh, like a panic attacks and all this stuff. Like, it's, you know, been a thing. So it's just one episode. It was just her doping herself for one episode and then easily getting over it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of a weak story, but... That's what that was. <laughs> That's what I love too. Though it's like we see these things, like Maggie's, you know, having fun on the computer. Macy's baking. It's like yeah. okay, so like because they got the help from the perfecti, they're just like we're completely off the clock now. We can do whatever. Yeah, Macy's not worried about that job she's been away from for a week. She's like, I'm gonna bake. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't Macy be at her work? <laughs> This is a continuation for her. This is uh, uh, consistent with her character uh, because she said she stress bakes in a previous episode. Now she's stress baking again. That's all. All right. (laughs) It just, it feels like everything's too easy immediately. Oh, the perfecti are on it. We're done. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I did like uh, the scene because Harry does kind of like a dad joke. <laughs> like she she asked him to go get some flour for her for baking, and then he brings flour and flowers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of liked it. <laughs> I did that dumb joke in the Dingo Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they were clearly watching, and they're like, yeah. let's use that joke. <laughs> yeah, that happens, and then... Josefina and Mel are talking, I think, in Mel's room, maybe, somewhere in the house. Josefina is looking at a picture of Marisol, and she's like, I wish that I could have met her. The woman she hated last yeah. episode? Why is she turned around on Marisol? There's no reason for her to go, I wish I could have met Marisol now. <laughs> yeah, like, even if she's like, oh, you guys are actually cool, and it's not your whole family, like, she was mad because of something Marisol did. That doesn't change your feelings about her. Yeah, it's like the show can't commit to Marisol being terrible and they have to just have characters praise her for no reason. <laughs> it's like, oh, she did another horrible thing. Uh, but you know what? She seemed really cool. <laughs> what? How? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, she's like, well, well, when the perfect eye touched me, um, they couldn't give me any magic because they can only borrow magic. They can't just create out of thin air. <laughs> can she's I a little borrow bit... magic? <laughs> and it's got your pictures on the cover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> can I borrow a magic? <laughs> can you give me a cup of potion? <laughs> Marisol's heart needs a <laughs> What do you think? Can I be a charmed one? Ew, no. <laughs> you hear Marisol, he stay dead. <laughs> Out a window. Oh! <laughs> Magic. 
Can you bring me a cup of potion? This witch's life is so tragic Fill my bag with your well of spells So Mel's like, hey look you're a witch, no matter what. We always we're gonna think of you as a witch all the time. You don't need to prove it to anyone that you're a witch. Um, and so she's like, "All right, so I got this recreation of the Book of Shadows. I'm gonna let you look at it now, and it's the OG book." Yeah, it's the OG Book of Shadows. This is a prequel. It all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Does this mean anything, or is it like fan service? Well. No, because they open the book and it says, like, Book of Shadows 2021 or something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, the fact that it looks exactly like the one from the original charm, is it just like, are they going to use this from now on? Or does this mean anything as far as its connection to the parent show? Or is it just like, here's an homage? Or, sorry guys, we know you hate this, but here's something (laughs) from the original Charmed. Guessing at any moment Maggie's gonna, like, put in a Sears portrait of Parker (laughs) doing that Cole pose (laughs) from the original Charmed. If they really wanted to update it, it would be like a Kindle book, but the Book of Shadows, like... Pulling up the Kindle of Shadows. Yeah. Oh no, I meant to charge this last night. It's ah, dead. damn it. <laughs> What's that recharge spell? <laughs> we have to use the magical charger. It won't work on just anyone. <laughs> it's on a, a Blackberry. They're a little bit behind. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, she opens it up. It's got like all the little handwriting and the giant... Uh, a giant text that uh, just wastes a bunch of space. Really, yeah. like it's just so huge. Yeah, we don't need this intro page. Like, tell us, we need the spells <laughs> if we're opening this. <laughs> uh, first, a little bit about the new author, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you stick it into this world, it's like a child made it. Mm-hmm. When you look at like, it's like this is not how a real book would look because it's like this. It's like one spell per two pages with giant pictures and calligraphy and drawings around it. And it's like, look, can we just? I just need this spell, man. Why does this have to be two hundred pounds? <laughs> <laughs> Mel's anecdotes about this spell. <laughs> be careful when rewriting time one time i wrote out my girlfriend and that didn't go very well lol why are all these power of three (laughs) spells in it when there wasn't a power of three before us ah (laughs) it makes more sense in this world actually because mel wrote this out after the fact so i guess those power three spells they've already had on the field for a while (laughs) (laughs) i still think an original charm there had to have been other powers of three but they're just, I know they keep saying there's not, but it's insane. It doesn't make any sense. And then there's always random doofs who's like, this guy can only be killed by power of three. Yeah. Like, why? How would you know? <laughs> How would you know that? Yeah. Yeah. But in this one, at least like there has been previous charmed ones. So yeah, makes enough sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so the girls go to the bunker with the perfect eye and uh, the perfect eye are like, hey, so we can cure this allergy, uh, but it could give you some side effects. Like death. <laughs> <laughs> We're in. <laughs> They're like, oh, please, please. <laughs> please. End the show. We're good. Please. It, it kills us. That's fine. <laughs> the cancellation demon is coming. Uh, so they open up. I wasn't really clear. Neither of us are really clear on if this was a portal or the tomb of chaos or yeah, It just something. looked like the por- a portal, though. They, they open up some big magic hole and the girls go inside for a cliffhanger. <laughs> And what will ha- will we follow up directly after that? We'll be like uh, a week later, like oh, that was crazy going to that port. <laughs> They'll be like, "Man, that sucks that they couldn't help us out." Yeah, but next time we'll get that allergy cured. <laughs> and there's this crazy fight. The scorpions came back and they formed a giant scorpion. Oh, you had to be there to see that great battle. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing that's past us. <laughs> The giant scorpion had the rock's face and it was really yeah. poorly rendered. <laughs> it's crazy. Do you smell what the scorpion's cooking? <laughs> All right, Phelan. The time has come for you to name your Margoyle. Oh, tough choice on this. <laughs> it's like, 
was almost Josefina for, you know, letting the perfect die out before she <laughs> really talked to them properly. But I'm going to give it to my favorite, Maggie, for <laughs> inserting schoolwork during an apocalypse, <laughs> making herself extra tired, and then having to deal with that by magic doping. <laughs> And also Mel's a candidate for suggesting that they would just make, you know, herself and Macy extra tired to take up the slack for her being silly and inserting uh, this where she shouldn't be. <laughs> there were uh, quite a lot of losers this week, gotta say. Yeah. Who was your Margoyle? <laughs> I'm torn, as I always am, between two choices. So here's the second runner up. The second runner up is the mini death worm. <laughs> just because like who's gonna take that seriously <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute yeah but he you know he grew big he big <laughs> and he was a little bit less of a loser nah, now he's just in another dimension so yeah now he's fine. off in jail again <laughs> um i think it's got to be the dumpster demon because mm. he had two seconds what was he even doing we don't even know his motivation Mm -hmm. We don't know nothing. The second he meets a charmed one, he's like, ah, now's my moment. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> loser. Got, yeah, taken out so easily. It's pretty yeah. losery. <laughs> doesn't get a name, doesn't get a motivation, barely gets any screen time. Pretty low on the demon totem pole, I gotta <laughs> yeah. say. I mean, you could pretty much put any demon enemy they fight in the show as the biggest <laughs> loser for how they treat them. <laughs> yeah. A bit less of a loser than the death worm, though. The death worm made it out alive on this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess to, to wrap things up, uh, what did you think overall? Uh, really disappointing. I wish we st saw the start of the apocalypse and anything that's going on with those scorpions and blood moon. Yeah. <laughs> that that would have been cool <laughs> instead of just jumping to six days later and them all complaining about it. Yeah. <laughs> Six days later. <laughs> yeah. There's like a couple of decent moments in this. The Perfecti are at least sort of interesting. But overall, I think they bungled a lot of things getting to this. Yeah. I think like there's a lot of stuff we didn't see. And again, there's a, a timing issue. And this has been consistent throughout the whole show. Either nothing's happening or everything's happening. Yeah. Um. I think they did have some interesting ideas. I like that there was a little bit more personality. They did have some humor in here, but it wasn't just trying to be stupid. Like, they just kind of sprinkled it in. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The show could be more, but it could be less, so... <laughs> yeah. I just... I wish characters took the urgency of situations they were in seriously. Because it, yeah. it ruins it for you as the audience if... You see the characters sitting around on the floor having a laugh while other characters are supposedly <laughs> in peril. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Or characters trying to jam in schoolwork while an apocalypse is going on. You're wrecking your stories by having them act this flippant about stuff. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a time and a place and a balance. Has not reached it. Mm -hmm. But that's where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? I'm good. All right. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, uh, we'd appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, reviewed, uh, wherever that you are enjoying this podcast. Uh, you can find us in audio form at anchor.fm or other podcast-related sites. Uh, we're under Charmed Hard with a Vengeance or Charmed Rewind. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash movie nights the series and youtube.com slash phalus. You can support our shows on Patreon, see things ahead of time, take part in polls, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm at patreon.com slash movie nights. Phelan's at patreon.com slash Phelus. Thanks to Peter Hunter for editing the podcast for us. You can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. What hashtag should we use? <laughs> hashtag Carnage and Charmed Miner. <laughs> hashtag Mini Deathworm. <laughs> hashtag Kindle of Shadows. <laughs> and that'll be a wrap for us. Uh, we'll see you Charmanders next week. I, I can't make any promises. I don't know the schedule anymore. <laughs> we'll see you when a new one airs. See you when you see you. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Bye.